Hello and welcome to day 14 of the advent of cyber by TriHackMe. Uh, we're doing web applications today. So learning objectives are web applications, the OWASP top 10 and IDOR. So web applications are a piece of software that can be accessed through a browser. Uh, this kind of replaces some of the old ways of creating applications that ran specifically on a computer. This allows developers to create one application to run across several different operating systems. Before in the past, you had to write software for the different uh, operating systems. Uh, you would see it would be common to see applications that ran on Windows, uh, Unix, and Linux platforms. And so this makes it easier to maintain one application and not having to have people that can write code for specific operating systems because there's a little bit of difference between coding for a Windows platform and a Unix or Linux based platform. So this made things easier for developers and for people to use applications. Back when uh, the, the thick client applications were more common, uh, you would have to have, you know, some cases you'd have to write an app for a different operating system. So having to keep up with that could, uh, be pretty difficult. And so with the web applications, it's made life easier uh, for to be able to write one application for many platforms. So the following are some examples of popular web applications. You have your webmail, such as Gmail, ProtonMail, and online shopping, such as Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, and then online banking. Most banks have online banking applications. Before in the past, used to, you had to install these applications on your computer. I remember back when I had my first uh, online banking application, I had to install the application on my computer and it used like a dial-up modem to connect to the bank to, to uh, perform the transactions. And so we've come a long way since then with applications made life easier, but there are some vulnerabilities that we have to watch for. So databases is an important piece to web applications. Uh, web applications need a place to store the data. And so there are two popular database models, rational database, it stores data in tables. Tables can share information, consider the basic examples of three tables, products, customer details, and, and purchases. The purchases table would, would uh, use information from the products table. Then non-relational databases is a database that uh, does not use tables. It might store data in, in documents and graph nodes, among other types. Generally speaking, web applications need to constantly query the database, for example, to search for information, add new records, and update existing ones. So access control. So access, consider, consider the case where you are using an online shop as a customer. After logging in successfully, you're able to browse available products and services, uh, check details and prices. Depending on the online shop, you might be able to ask a question or review about the product. However, as a customer, you should not be able to change the price. So it, it's been possible in the past and more common years ago to be able to update and change the price of a product and even some cases give it a negative price so that way you could actually put money into your account. So this is less common, but these type of vulnerabilities are still, still out there. So web application vulnerabilities. So the OWASP uh, top 10 is out there to, to list and bring awareness to some of the most popular uh, vulnerabilities out there. And this doesn't mean this is all the vulnerabilities out there. These are the most popular ones at the time. This changes from year to year. So uh, the most recent one was 2021. Before that was 2017. And they just periodically update that. So IDOR refers to the situation where a user can manipulate the input to bypass authorization due to poor access control. IDOR was the fourth on the OWASP top 10 list in 2013 before it was published under broken access control in 2017. To learn about, more about IDOR, consider the following examples. So here we see the user ID is 132. And you see the syntax here where ID equals 132. If we go in there, we're able to manipulate that, change it to ID 101. So we're able to access someone else's data, uh, McSkitty's data. 
And so you're able to change that. And so consider the example where requesting an invoice generates similar to this. So we see the invoices in download equal 115. So we're able to change this to 114 to manipulate the data and retrieve another invoice. So you get the, the idea here by manipulating this number, we're able to access. Some of the other things that could be done too is like changing passwords. So, so the attacker would replace, for instance, their username Yeti in the in the field. So we would change that to someone else's name and go through and change that user's password. And so we'd be able to access that. So these are the type of things that can happen through IDOR vulnerabilities. And in our task here, we're going to see how that works and give it a try and see how we can do that and how that could be used in real world. So we're gonna go over here to our application. McSkitty is the user. Dev test is the username. And we're gonna sign in. So they're asking us, what is the office number of Elf uh, Pivot McRed? So we have McSkitty's account here. So what are we gonna do here? So we'll increase it by one and see what we got, Elf McBlue. So we're gonna to continue to increase this until we get to the account we want to get to. Okay, so we've got our number here, office number. So we're looking for Elf Pivot, Pivot McRed. So we got that correct. So our next flag we need to get is here is not only profile pages, but also stored images are vulnerable. So we're going to view the image and we need to get, figure out the flag here. So let's go ahead and, so we went through these different accounts. So we will go back to, here, go back a little bit and let's see, we're decreasing our numbers here. Let's go to 100 and see what we got. So there we have our flag. Our flag. And that completes the challenge. So if you're really interested in, in web app pen testing, uh, Try Hack Me has some really good content on uh, getting started in web app pen testing. So if you go check those challenges out, uh, they take you from the basics of how HTTP works. Uh, there's even uh, training within uh, Try Hack Me on using Burp Suite, but they go through and they teach you on these different subjects uh, and, and you'll get a better grasp on it and cover such things as IDOR. So I hope you enjoy this challenge and I hope you enjoy the upcoming ones.